Yo, what's up guys, it's Nasjack here. Uh, today I want to talk about Rich Barton coming back as Zillow CEO. Uh, ARK Invest released an article saying that pretty much this is Zillow 2.0. It's a new era for Zillow and um, this is gonna be big. Now, um, before I get into this, I don't own any Zillow and um, I'm sure there's bear cases too, but these are I wanted to talk about today just one bull case that I see. Um, so first off, just a little bit about Rich Barton is that he founded Expedia, Zillow, Glassdoor, and Trover, which was then later acquired by Expedia. And he's a board member on board member on Netflix, Avo, Real Self, Artsy, and Nextdoor. So uh, I'm gonna put a table here, and it's just gonna show um, you know the companies that he's founded and then the valuation of those companies. So he has his hands in about $189 billion worth of companies, uh, which are pretty great, which are pretty solid companies, uh, very recognizable names. So this move, coming back as Rich Barton for the CEO of Zillow, um, I, it's pretty huge in my opinion. So before becoming an entrepreneur, Rich Barton went to Stanford and he graduated in 1989 with engineering degree. Uh, he then went in consulting, went into Microsoft, and then at Microsoft, he pitched the idea to um, Bill Gates, Steve Ballmer, and somebody else, and um, they let him go start Expedia. His philosophy is that he wants to build marketplaces for people, so uh, pretty much transparency of information, and the way that you can see this is for Expedia, he just made travel prices uh, very easy to see. For Zillow, he made real estate prices uh, very public, and Glassdoor was, of course, like employee reviews of their own company. Um, now, on his boards uh, at Netflix, Avo, Real Self, Artsy, Nextdoor, uh, at Netflix, I think it makes, you know, it bundles up consumer content, and that also makes the TV marketplace and the movie marketplace a lot more transparent as well. Well, so why do a pivot given the fact that business is pretty darn good? Business is good. We don't think of it as a pivot. We think okay. of it as an extension. I think that the core problem that Zillow needs to solve and why it will either be a bull case or a bear case is that Zillow needs to solve the iBuyer problem. What an iBuyer is, is that it is a company that uses data and says, okay, we're going to purchase this home and then, you know, we're going to give you the liquidity in a few days and then we're going to turn around and sell it on our own. Um, now what this does is it, it pretty much takes into account uh, all the data of your home neighborhood, the growth of the neighborhood, the surrounding homes, uh, the people in that area, the types of jobs. Then they turn around and they sell this. And this is the key thing is that traditionally, uh, if I was gonna sell a home, you would hire a realtor and then that realtor would work for about a fee of like 5%. Um, now in the UK or Sweden, that fee is one or two percent. But if you use Zillow's iBuyer program, it's about nine percent. And so this is where I think Zillow, even though they're in a huge market, they did not capture enough of that market share in the last few years. And so I think that if they solve this problem where they bring this nine percent down to 5% like a traditional realtor or even lower, which I do believe is possible, I think there is a lot of growth opportunity there. And the reason that I believe that they can bring the fee down from 9% to 5% or even if it's 7%, but it still is so much faster and a much better process for the sellers and then for them to sell the homes themselves. We don't think of it as a flipping business. Flipping is really about taking advantage of a distressed seller. What we're right. trying to do is provide a service to a seller so they don't have to deal with the, with the difficulty, the complexity, the uncertainty, the time of selling. Is because Rich Barton recently said that there's a huge parallel to Netflix. Well, we think of it like Netflix moving into originals. So it was a big okay. swing for That's Netflix. That's a very good view. I wish and you didn't use that. That's good. <laughs> Better late than never, I guess. But, um, you know, what they did was they used their data advantage and then they built that muscle memory, that DNA to right. be creative. And it was a big swing for them. And, and obviously, it's created a huge business. Amazon moving into AWS, what? similar model extensions. And once Zillow creates that data, then they're going to have a huge opportunity. So the reason that 
I believe that this is comparative to Netflix is that initially all these um, movie producers like uh, any of the Hollywood like uh, Universal Pictures or any of that any of those they would make movies and then put them out to the public in movie theaters and then they would get you know okay this many people went to go see my movie but they would not get data on how long the movie was watched um, you know if they transferred if they told their friends like what demographics are watching the movies there were there was all of this missing data that I believe that Netflix found and that's why it's obviously um, such a powerful stock and I believe that if Zillow can figure out okay uh, you know one example would be using LinkedIn data saying that okay um, there's a lot of these jobs moving into this area so then and they have this median salary so then they're willing to pay this and then there's these jobs that are moving out of this place and uh, oh this is a high growth area and then also using like statistics and uh, data analysis and you know I I'm being very hand wavy here but I'm sure that they will create algorithms that um, allow them to understand the selling price a lot better. Oh, we're just going to sell them quickly. So we're going to okay. sell them after just a couple of weeks or maybe a couple months. I mean, the, the model calls for at, at most 90-ish day turn time. And we think that because we have access to buyers using our websites, we can actually pre-market the home almost before we, before we buy yeah. the home. We can start selling it to a potential buyer. So you'll see days on market come down. That is a big driver of return on equity as well. So we're not going to buy and hold. We're buying and selling. So once they do that, then they're going to be able to have a higher degree of certainty in what they're selling the homes for and what they can sell the homes for. And then that will allow them to bring down their uh, liquidity premium fee from 9% down to, I, I personally like 7 or 6%, which will hopefully be on par with the current realtors' uh, commission fees and uh, they'll be able to pretty much start capturing that market. There was a, a survey that said that nine out of ten home buyers that looked at the iBuyer program, they didn't end up going with it. Most people are not going to accept the offer that we make for their home. Okay. Most people are going to want to sell their home conventionally. When they do, we will hand them off to a premier agent. So it it actually enhances our core business while still opening up new opportunities. Of course, demand for uh, an iBuyer program. Just if it was so much easier to sell and buy homes. Um, so I think that Rich Barton coming on with his experience at Netflix and, and those parallels, but also at Glassdoor, Expedia, um, his whole philosophy is creating transparency in a marketplace. And I believe that if Zillow can execute properly on this, they can create number one transparency, but also a greater pricing uh, mechanism. So those are my quick thoughts on the Zillow uh, so those are my quick thoughts on the Zillow CEO change. Um, there's a lot more that goes into the Zillow um, bull case or bear case. And um, like I said, I'm not invested in it myself, but this is what I believe to be the core problem. And I think that Zillow can solve this problem. It's not a problem that can't be solved. It's a problem that just needs some time and some data and some um, you know, vision by the CEO to solve this. Anyways, um, comment below if you want a specific stock reviewed. I'm going to try to be posting more often and be more active on this channel. Talk to you in the next one.